Picture yourself joyfully cruising in your Lamborghini, thinking you're the fastest on the road. Then you hear a strange noise. You look around, but there's nothing that seems to make that sound. To your surprise, the source turns out to be a four-door family sedan with a big-ass spoiler and fog lights. You're confused, then car takes off with gunshots and disappears from your sight. You can't help but exclaim, sheesh. Congratulations, my friend. You've just encountered an Evo equipped with the legendary 4G63 engine, AKA Lambo Killer. The remarkable 4G63T engine made its debut in the 1988 Mitsubishi Galant VR4 and later found its way into the high-performance Evolution Lancer. In North America, the 4G63 was featured in the top-tier trim levels of the initial and second-generation Diamond Star Motors cars, also known as DSMs. These sporty compact coupes bore the badges of Mitsubishi, Eagle, or Plymouth. During the late 1980s, the Group A Gallant VR4, powered by the 4G63, secured Mitsubishi's first outright victories in the World Rally Championship. This success led to the homologation of the Group A Lancer Evolution, driven by Finland's Tommy Mekinen, who clinched the driver's title for four consecutive years, 1996 to 1999, and the Manufacturer's Championship in 1998. The dominance of the Lancer Evo extended to the Group NFIA Championship for showroom-ready race cars, where it claimed seven consecutive titles with four different drivers from 1995 to 2001. Even in 2002, when Mitsubishi trailed behind Proton in the Group N Rally, it was the 4G63 engine that powered the Proton to victory. While Mitsubishi has traditionally been linked with rally and circuit racing, the last 15 years have witnessed the 4G63 engine playing a significant role in Mitsubishi-powered drag racing vehicles. With each passing year, the 4G63 continues to break records, surprising enthusiasts with performance levels previously thought unattainable from a four-cylinder engine. The 4G63T engine is like the superhero of the car world, known for its tough design and killer performance. Picture it with a slightly squat shape, secret weapon for more power and saving gas. While everyone was going all aluminum, Mitsubishi said, Nah, we love cast iron. They used a ton of it to build a block that's like a tank, thick and unbreakable. This block can handle power almost 10 times more than the EX2000 Turbo. And guess what? They did the same superhero thing to the crankshaft, coated and weighted, making it basically indestructible. Over 20 years, they kept giving the 4G63T engine upgrades. Some parts inside changed, but the cast piston design stayed like a loyal sidekick, tough and ready for action. Now, the 4G63 engine itself is a mix of power and style. A cast iron block, an aluminum head, a forged steel crankshaft, and cast aluminum pistons all team up. They use a timing belt, not a chain, to keep things in sync, like a perfectly choreographed dance. Different 4G engines have their own aluminum head styles. Basic, better, and the absolute best. The single cam head uses rocker arms for valves and needs a little TLC. Since E87, dual cam heads jumped into the scene with automatic hydraulic valve adjustments, no fuss, all power. Just when you thought it couldn't get cooler, the 4G63's head and block can switch places with its cool sibling, the 4G64, giving you more power, up to 2.4 liters of it. Surprise, surprise, you can still find the 4G63 rocking in cars today, hitting a whopping 40-year milestone on the Mitsubishi platform with fans going wild for upgrades. As the 4G63 got a facelift, it got fancier with high-tech stuff, adding more power. The combo of a sleek aluminum head and a tough iron block turned it into a speed demon, hitting over 1,000 horsepower and more. Now that's a ride worth revving for. The 4G63 block comes in two types, 6-bolt and 7-bolt. This talks about the number of bolts holding the flywheel to the crankshaft, and it shows there are many other differences in the engine. The key thing is, 
The seven bolt main bearings are said to be not as strong as the ones in six bolt engines, making them less popular for high horsepower projects. Now the seven bolt engines have a bit of a reputation for something called crank walk. This happens when the thrust bearing on the crankshaft wears down fast, causing big problems in the engine's lower part when it fails. Some people argue that seven bolt engines aren't automatically more likely to get crank walk, and it's mostly just talked about on the internet. Either way, if you're buying a used 4G63, it's crucial to check the crankshaft for any play. This helps spot an engine that might have a worn thrust bearing and the early signs of the dreaded crank walk. The original 4G63 comes with balance shafts that a second rear timing belt drives, but there's a catch. This belt is prone to breaking, causing the main timing belt to fail and leading to a serious engine breakdown. That's why many performance focused 4G63 owners usually remove these balance shafts and their timing belt as one of the first steps. However, there's a trade-off. The balance shaft helps reduce engine vibrations at idle and cruise speeds. It's a small thing to give up for a performance engine, but it's worth noting. Let's dive into what folks are saying online about the 4G63 engine. It's like a horsepower party. Some believe the engine can handle up to 400 horsepower and 400 torque before giving up. Others take it up a notch, saying 550 horsepower is doable on the stock block and a few dream big, claiming it can handle a whopping 1,000 horsepower with a bit of tweaking. But here's the common advice. If you're aiming for more than 400 horsepower, kickstart your journey with a six bolt engine, not a seven bolt. Now, let's talk forged rods and pistons. They play nice until you hit around 500 horsepower. Heads up, those head bolts are a bit delicate and might cause heads to lift around 325, 350 wheel horsepower. Toss in some AR studs and you're cruising comfortably until the 500 horsepower mark. But after that, it's time for extra head security. The crankshaft is usually robust and doesn't get pushed to the max, although be wary of cracked cranks, especially in later model Evos. Lastly, let's focus on the block. The six bolt block is a powerhouse flexing its muscles to handle a hefty 700 plus horsepower. But here's the catch. It needs a bit of a makeover. The block is solid, sleeves are good, but watch out for the weak spots. The mains and cast iron girdle. The secret sauce. A proper tune-up. Torque tends to be the mischief maker for the block's lower end, not necessarily horsepower. A well-tuned engine can make your modded ride a reliability champ. Without any tweaks, the six bolt can handle around 600 wheel horsepower, but the real thrill kicks in around 500, pushing the limits. As for the seven bolt, it's believed to handle a respectable 500, 550 horsepower. So gear up and let the horsepower adventures begin. What do you think about 4G63 and Evo? Do you want to own one someday? Or do you already have one? Let us know in the comments. Catch you in the next one. See ya.